In a world filled with iPods, smartphones, and tablets, we often take for granted the electricity that is needed to power our fancy gadgets. But the power plants that provide us electricity are far between, and without government loans to local cooperatives, one in five Americans would still be without a connection to a local grid today. You might think that many farmers need an update in modern technology today, but if you consider some important factors, you might agree that electricity is very important to a farmer's life too. It may seem like government loans for electricity would hurt the economy, but this program was actually created to strengthen the economy by creating more jobs. In the mid-1930s, the United States government was looking for new ways to boost the economy from the Great Depression. In response to this need, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, along with congressmen supporters from both parties, came up with a series of ideas with the goals of relieving the unemployed, recovering the economy, and reforming the financial system. This series of ideas came to be known as the New Deal, and helped the United States to gain attraction on its economy that later gained even more footing during the events of World War II. My great-grandfather, John Haig, talked about one of the New Deal programs. <laughs> now, put... <laughs> yes. now, some of these shit, that would be great. Yeah. And you probably even have more for you. And there's the two of our four women Young boys. Kids that ain't got no yeah. job yeah. and can't get a job. Wait a minute, there was five River boys. Come Rosebelt. on, come on, come on, come on. Put those out in CC camps. Give them a dollar a day. Oh, it was killed in the auto accident. And they cleaned up. And then, uh, yeah. And this National was... National Forest. So put them to work. Mm -hmm. And they, oh, they, they were more or less... Yeah, Wayne was... Give them board and room. Yeah. Plenty no, good no, grub. No. But he, he put them to work. He'd yeah. say that... Many of the programs that were a part of the New Deal still operate today. One of these programs is the Rural Utilities Service, formerly known as the Rural Electrification Administration. The Rural Electrification Administration was created on May 11, 1935, when President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed the Rural Electrification Act permitting government loans to many local cooperatives, which were founded to distribute electricity to their respective areas. My great-grandpa Haig was a member of one of these cooperatives that was set up in Van Oidu Township, the township that he lived in. The reasons why the United States government wanted to give farmers electricity were largely due to health concerns. Rural households without any electricity generally had little means of storing and cooling food. The fact that only a small amount of farms in the United States had access to grid electricity was an embarrassment to the U.S. government. In 1934, a year before the Rural Electrification Act was signed, only 11% of farms in the United States had access to grid electricity. This lagged significantly behind many European countries. The same year, both Germany and France had over 90% of their farms connected to grid electricity, and the Netherlands had almost 100% of its farms connected to grid electricity. But the primary reason why the US government wanted to give farms electricity was to create jobs. In addition to electricians getting jobs as a result of the Rural Electrification Administration, inspectors also had to review the job that the electricians did in terms of wiring as well as the provision of running water. My grandpa remembers that the electrician that wired his house for grid electricity took shortcuts to get the job done faster, and the inspector forced him to redo the entire job. Electricity changed the farmers' lives to varying degrees. Although in the early 1930s, most farms were not connected to grid electricity, many farmers made electricity of their own, 
via wind turbines and generators. We, li we, lived, uh, we lived on a farm by a little town in southwest Minnesota that had electric power. And, uh, and so I, I, I grew up in, in that house for about four years. And then we moved to a different one that also had electric power. Now, I'm not sure about the first one, but I know I was old enough in the second one to understand that they had their, that it had its own little generator system, a little motor generator, and every night we would have to start up the, uh, the motor and charge the batteries, and then all during the day we would have uh, battery-powered uh, electricity. So you didn't have a lot, but you had switches, light bulbs and all of the end. And since this was a farm, we also had a electric powered milking machine, which made the day as far as I was concerned, you didn't have to milk the cows by hand. So it, it sort of evo it evolved kind of slowly in, in my case. It wasn't just no, no electric power one day and then electric power the next day. Generally throughout the country, the groups who had previously made their own electricity were a minority among farmers, and although they weren't impacted by the Rural Electrification Administration as much as the rest of the farmers, grid electricity brought them many options that would not have been possible before. Well, one of the things, as far as the big deal that I remember specifically, is that my mother was, was an avid uh, baker. She loved to make things and bake things and when she got an electric mixer that was a huge huge deal because she used to mix up cakes and bread and everything else with a crank type mixer and then suddenly she had this great electric mixer that she could just put the stuff in flip the switch vary the speed and it really made her life much, much easier and much more interesting because she loved to do that. For the farmers that didn't already have electricity, their lives would change forever. Electricity opened many doors that weren't possible before, such as running water, air conditioning, and storage of food. You know, it was almost impossible to make a living. Uh, I, I guess I'd have to say it was impossible to make a living because the folks borrowed a lot of money um, and the government realized there were a lot of people after the Great Depression a lot of people were in great trouble they just didn't have any money at all so something needed to be done to help out people and I think that's why the government did it. The Rural Electrification Administration proved to be a huge success. Compared to the 11% of farms that had electricity one year prior, by 1942, 48% of U.S. farms had electricity. By 1952, 90%, and by 1978, 98% of U.S. farms had electricity. With the success of bringing farms electricity in 1949, the Rural Electrification Administration's purposes were extended. No telephone service could be brought to farms. Unlike electricity, a majority of farms had telephone service prior to this. But telephone service was not achievable in the farms that did not have this advantage, and they desperately needed the same process to get telephone service that they had to get electricity. In 1994, the Rural Electrification Administration was reorganized as a division of the United States Department of Agriculture and, and renamed the Rural Utilities Service. It was also given the power to use the same loan system to provide sewage and water systems in rural areas. The Rural Electrification Administration has helped in getting modern technologies to farms that would have otherwise been left in the dark for decades. The role it played has not been shelved. Every time a new home or road is built in the countryside, 
The same process of loans still goes through its successor, the Rural Utilities Service. Thanks to this revolutionary process, more Americans can afford the necessities of communication through electricity. Music